Hello, my name is Tony Vorobiec. Welcome to Lesson 1, which aims to cover the main technical problems you're likely to encounter when photographing in low light or at night. Many inexperienced photographers think that there are many difficult technical challenges involved with this kind of photography. But as you will quickly discover, photographing at night is no more difficult than during the day. The first thing to understand is that when photographing at night, you are able to capture the world in an entirely new way. If you prepare to shoot at this inconvenient time of day, you'll be rewarded with mysteriously beautiful images. If you've never done this kind of work before, you might wonder how to focus in the dark. It's much easier than you think. There will always be some area of light that you can focus on. And if you're still not sure, then use a small aperture, which should ensure that every part of your image remains in focus. Finally, if your lens has an autofocus facility, turn it off. It will have great difficulty seeing a suitable point of focus, therefore it goes into hunt mode. What this means is that it cannot focus on anything. One of the drawbacks of photographing in low light is you can encounter noise, an increased appearance of graininess which can reduce the overall quality of the image. This can be easily overcome. Most DSLR cameras now offer a noise reduction facility. It will be available within the camera menu and should be selected when making exposures of one second or more. If it proves impractical to use the camera's noise reduction facility, this can be remedied after you've taken your photograph when using the RAW converter. Finally, there are several image editing software packages you may wish to use, which will solve this problem. The best known is Neat Image, which can be downloaded from the address below. It is sometimes quite difficult seeing the horizon in low light. Some tripods have a spirit level built into the tripod head, but if yours does not, then most camera shops now sell small spirit level attachments, which you can place on the camera's hot shoe. If it's dark, you may still have problems seeing whether your camera is level, so you always have a small torch available. As most of your photographs will require lengthy exposures, a tripod is an essential piece of equipment. I view my tripod second only in importance to my camera. With it, I know I'm able to choose any ISO I want to, together with whatever aperture I need. If you do not own a tripod, the general advice is to buy the best you can afford and the heaviest you can comfortably carry. Some might question this last point, but as many of your shots might require exposures of five minutes or more, and if you're a photographing landscape, for example, you could quite easily experience strong gusts of wind. Your tripod should be heavy enough to withstand that. It's also worth giving consideration to the tripod head. As you will need to be able to use it with ease, I would strongly recommend getting a ball and socket type. This is a typical example where a tripod is essential. To achieve this shot, I needed an exposure time of 142 seconds. That's nearly two and a half minutes. Clearly, hand holding a camera for that long is out of the question. This might be an appropriate time to discuss the bulb setting on your camera. Most cameras have a maximum automated shutter speed of just 30 seconds. All, however, will also have one called bulb, or B. In order to set the shutter time for longer than 30 seconds, select bulb and keep the aperture open for as long as you need by using the cable release. If your camera does not appear to have a dedicated bulb setting, you may well find it within the camera's manual mode. If you are unsure, refer to your camera manual. One of the aspects of night photography which surprises many inexperienced photographers is how easily night can be made to look like day. While this looks as if it's been taken in normal daylight, the sun had set about 25 minutes earlier, and I needed to use an exposure of 7 seconds. If you're in doubt, look in the bottom left corner and you'll see the moving headlights from several cars. I'm frequently asked what ISO rating should you use when photographing at night. If you're using a tripod, use the ISO rating you're most comfortable with. It's very easy to see whether the exposure is accurate. Most of us look in the camera's monitor and we can immediately see if we have been successful. However, the monitor can appear deceptively bright at night time, which can often lead to underexposure. It's far better to check your histogram instead. All DSLR cameras will offer this facility. While it's normal in no light for the histogram to bunch slightly to the left, if this is excessive, you're in danger of underexposing. 
As I've explained earlier, noise will always pose a problem when photographing at night. One way of overcoming this is to make sure that you do not underexpose.